Hi everyone, and welcome to lesson number 11, uh, Learning to Code, the Video Games Edition. Today we're going to be learning a game that I call Alien Invasion. It's lots of fun. So I'm already at the scratch page. I've just hit the create. I'm going to get rid of the tutorial because I'm due to tutorial today. I'm also going to get rid of the cat. So goodbye to the cat. I'll hit the trash can. And what I'm going to get today is instead the rocket ship because the game is you're going to be defending the Earth against alien invaders. And so we need a rocket ship. So I'm going to suggest that everybody get this rocket ship right here. It's this one. Great. Now there's different costumes to this rocket ship. The one I like is the one without the flames like that. So I'm going to use this rocket ship right there. Perfect. I'm going to shrink them a bit right now. It's kind of big. I'm going to make them like a 50%. Perfect. And I'm going to have him start at the bottom because in this game, he's going to scroll across the bottom like this and shoot alien invaders. And so I'm going to have him start uh, at zero and um, let's say negative 156, I think is about the right spot. So when the green flag is clicked, go to zero and negative 156, right down at the bottom there. Negative 156. You can decide exactly where you want him to go, but I think that's kind of where I want him to go. Perfect. See, he's almost touching the bottom there. Now, we have to code for him to move back and forth along the bottom so he can shoot alien invaders. So, this should be a review for most of us. Um, when the green flag is clicked, forever check to see if touching the right or the left arrow key. So, forever check to see if touching the right arrow key. And again, so that's under the sensing. And I'm going to get the right... Perfect, right there, right arrow, and change X by 10. Change X by 10, perfect. I'm gonna duplicate this code rather than getting again, so I'm gonna put my mouse pointer there and duplicate it, perfect. And I'm gonna make this a left arrow key and change X by negative 10. So I'll just grab this and put this in the loop there. Let me make this a bit bigger so you can see it, perfect. So. Um, when the green flag is clicked, our rocket ship is going to go to zero and negative 156, which is right there. And when the green flag is clicked, the computer is going to forever check to see if the right arrow key is being pressed. If it is, change X by 10. If the left arrow key is being pressed, change X by negative 10. Let me just test that out by hitting the green flag, left and right. Perfect. Now, for this game, we're going to be shooting aliens coming down from the sky. So I need to get some kind of a laser, something like that. And what works for me is the wand. You'll see the wand here. And I would suggest you use the wand as well. Wand, 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 right there. Perfect. It kind of looks like a laser if you shrink it. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. 50%. Perfect. Look at that. Now... We want the wand to start at the same place as the rocket ship and to move back and forth with the rocket ship. And when you fire, it's going to shoot straight upwards and hit an alien. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the rocket and I'm just going to copy the code right onto the wand because it's going to do the exact same thing as the rocket ship. So I'm going to grab that code, drag it onto the wand and let go. And I'm going to grab this code and drag it right onto the wand and let go. So you'll see here's the code for the rocket. Here's the code for the wand. Perfect. They're on top of each other. So I'm going to right click and clean up the blocks. Perfect. Wonderful. So now look, when I hit the green flag, oh, there's a problem. Look, the wand is on top of the rocket. I don't like that. I want it to be hidden behind it. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the uh, looks button right there. And I'm going to ask it to go behind, go back. Right there, do you see that? Look, go to the back layer. So go back a layer, wonderful. So it should be hiding behind the rocket. Green flag, there it is. So there's the rocket. There's the wand hiding beside, behind it. And the wand is like a laser that we're gonna fire out against the aliens. I'm also gonna get a backdrop that works really well for this one. And the one I want is a space one. You're out in space protecting the earth. I like nebula. So there's the nebula one. Hey, you'll notice it might be a little bit hard to see the rocket. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the rocket. I'm going to go to the costumes. I'm just going to enhance the rocket's looks a little bit. Look, I'm going to choose the bucket and choose a color for the outline that's really bright. And I think what works for me is yellow. I'm going to get a bright yellow. 
and I'm just going to hover over the edge right there and click it there. Now look, now it really stands out nicely. So let's test this out. The rocket and the wand should be moving back and forth. Perfect. The wand is behind the rocket and they both move back and forth when I hit the arrow key. And I've got a nice background. So now it's your turn. Teachers, I mean students, if you'd like to uh, go to Scratch, hit the Create button, get rid of the tutorial, choose a nice backdrop, go get the rocket. I like the costume without the flames, but you can decide which one you want. I would shrink the rocket a bit and code it so it moves back and forth. And then go and get a wand as well and code it just the same to go back and forth behind the rocket ship. And remember, I asked the uh, computer to set the wand back a layer behind the rocket. So teachers, if you'd like to pause here, and when everyone's ready and caught up, I'm he I'll be here waiting for you. All right, welcome back. Well, hey, now we want to send the wand flying upwards, so this laser beam flying upwards to attack the aliens. So let's figure out how to do that. I'm just going to move this all over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that when the up arrow key is pressed, so I'm going to go here and get spacebar, but I'm going to change that to up arrow, right? So when you hit the up arrow, the laser beam goes flying up, up arrow. Now, I don't want the original wand to go up because then it, it can only, we can only reshoot it every time it finishes going all the way up to the top. I want to shoot a whole bunch all the time. So what I'm going to tell a computer to do is when I hit the up arrow, create a clone of the, uh, of the um, wand. So create a clone of myself. So I'm on the wand right now. When the up arrow key is pressed, create a clone of myself. Perfect. Now, when I start as a clone, so every clone that we make, every copy we make, we want it firing upwards. So I'm going to have it change its Y position, change its Y position by 10. So that way it's going up because Y means up. And I'm going to have that happen like 10 times. Let's just see how that works. Ready? So green flag to start. It's moving back and forth nicely. I'm going to hit the up arrow. Perfect. Okay. It doesn't go that far up though. It's 10 isn't enough. So I'm going to, let's try 30 times. So green flag. So there, back and forth. Shoot the arrow up. Oh, almost. Let's try 35 times. That should get it all the way to the top. Okay. Green flag. Perfect. Left, right, up arrow. Perfect. Now you'll notice you can still see it there. It's not, um, it's not disappearing. It'll sit there forever. All of the clones will sit there forever. So we want to delete that clone. So after it gets to the top, we're going to press delete this clone right there. Delete the clone. Let's see how that looks. Ready? Green flag, left, right, and delete. Perfect. See that? Nice. However, you can still see them. That's because these are clones of the original clones. So I have a little trick. How about this? When the arrow gets all the way to the top, whether it's a clone or a clone of a clone, it disappears. Watch how I do that. So I'm going to get an if statement. If, if, right there. If touching, no, if the Y um, coordinates are all the way to the top, so Y is 180 up here. If Y equals 180, then delete the clone. So then delete the clone. So Y equals 180, equals 180. It's under the operators button. Equals right there. I'm going to drag that in there, leave it. Um, and I'm going to say 180. Perfect. Or if you want, you can say if it's greater than 180. That might simplify things for the computer. Greater than 180. Now, if the wands Y position is greater than 180. Y position, that would be under the motion. So Y position, see it right there, Y position? I'm gonna grab that. If the Y position is greater than 80, then delete this clone. So I'm gonna sneak that in right there. So now look everybody, when I hit the up arrow, the computer's gonna make a clone of the wand. Then the wand is gonna go upwards changing Y by 10 35 times. And it's going to check over and over again if the Y position is 180. If the Y position is 180, then the wand will disappear. Let's just test it out. Ready? Left, right, and disappears. 
You don't see it at all. Fabulous. So those are all clones going up. And they're all disappearing when they reach the 180 uh, uh, axis. Perfect. Wonderful. So, teachers, um, I think we're going to pause there. Students, go and get a wand and clone it. And check it so that when the Y position of the wand gets all the way to the top, that it deletes the clone. And I would repeat the wand 35 times, changing Y by 10. So, teachers, if you'd like to pause here, and when everyone's ready, I'll be here waiting for you. All right, welcome back. Well, hey, now we're going to go get another sprite that's going to come down from the top. And the game is you got to shoot this thing. So I'm going to click the sprites, and we're going to get an apple. Perfect. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And not to worry, I'm going to change the apple's costume so it's more like an alien later. Just for now, I'm going to get an apple. Hey, and when the green flag is clicked, I want the apple to, first of all, hide so it's not sitting right there. So I'm going to say green flag, hide, and then I want the computer to make a clone of the apple. So make a clone of the apple. Make a clone. Create a clone of myself. See, I'm on the apple right now, and I've told the computer to make a clone of the apple. So make a clone of myself. Perfect. Now, when the apple starts as a clone, I want it to start randomly at the top here. So green flag, the apple's hiding. I'm going to have it start randomly at the top. So I'm going to tell it to go to, perfect, go to. And I know the top is uh, Y coordinates of 180. That's the top. But I want it to go somewhere from maybe over here to here, to start up here somewhere. I don't know where up there. So this side is negative 240. This side is 240. So I'm going to go get a random number, a range. Pick a random number like that. And I'm just going to slide it right in there. So the X coordinates are going to be negative 240 all the way to 240. Perfect. And then I'm going to ask the computer to or the Apple to show itself to show. So go somewhere up there and then show itself. Perfect. Let's see if we see that green flag. Perfect. You see that it's right there. If I hit the green flag again, it's at a different spot, but it's always at the top somewhere. So the coordinates for the Y are 180 but the X coordinates are somewhere along the top, I don't know where. So now I'm gonna have the apple drift downwards. So again, repeat, uh, I don't remember what it was, was it about 35 or 33 times? Perfect. And change the Y coordinates by negative 10. So change the Y coordinates by negative 10. Change Y, negative 10. Perfect, it's gonna do that 33 times. And then it's gonna hide. So back to the looks. So once it gets to the bottom, it hides. So ready, green flag, let's see if that works. Perfect, except it doesn't repeat. I gotta keep hitting the green flag. So I'm gonna have this go on forever. So I'm gonna put a forever looper on this. So green flag, I'm sorry, start as a clone. Forever, pick a random spot at the top, show yourself, and then slowly drift downwards, and then when you get to the bottom, hide. Perfect. Wonderful. Except there's only one apple coming at a time. It's a pretty easy game. I want a whole bunch of apples. So look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put a forever loop around this. So forever create apples. So I'm going to put that around there. So now it's going to create a bunch of apples. Ready? Let's see what happens. Green flag again. Oi, oi, oi. That's too many apples. I gotta slow the computer down a little bit. It's going too fast. So I'm just gonna say, um, um, wait a certain amount of time. But I don't want it to be too predictable. So I'm gonna put a wait in there, but I'm gonna have it wait a random amount of time. So um, maybe 0 0.1 seconds, so it comes right away, or all the way up to two seconds. So it might have to wait a couple seconds. So we don't know when it's gonna come down. Let's see if that works any better. I'm just going to make this a bit smaller. Perfect. Green flag. Good. So the, now they're coming down at random times, and I can start shooting them. Perfect. Wonderful. Nice. So, um, students, can you go and get an apple now? And have the green flag clicked, and it creates a clone of itself. And when it starts as a clone, go to a random spot at the top, 
show itself and you know repeat 10 times or 33 times changing the y coordinates by minus 10 and then hide and of course i made the clones happen forever and to wait a little bit of time before the next clone so students you can get to work if you get stuck please please look at my code teachers if you'd like to pause here and when you're ready to go to the next part i'll be here waiting all right welcome back well hey we're gonna make some points now so that every time you shoot one of the apples you get points now there's millions of apples but only one wand so i'm gonna put the points on the apples i think it'll be a little bit easier so look uh, i'm gonna go to the variables button i'm on the apples right now i'm gonna go to the variables button and i'm gonna make a variable and i'm gonna call this alien uh, invasion so these are my points, alien invasion. Okay, perfect, so right there. So now when the green flag is clicked, I'm gonna set my alien invasion points to zero. So set points, alien invasion to zero. Now for all of these clones, uh, I'm gonna to go to the control. When I start as a clone, so any of these that start as a clone, when I start as a clone, perfect. Forever check to see if you're touching a wand. So forever, if touching wand, so touching is a sense, it's under the sensing, touching wand, perfect, wand, right there. So when I start as a clone, forever check to see if I'm touching the wand. And if I am, um, change points. So I'm going to go to the variables button, change alien invasion points by one so you get a point every time you shoot one of the apples you get a point and if you do shoot one of the apples i want the apple to hide or delete let's do that so when i start as a clone forever check to see if i'm touching the wand if i am touching a wand change the alien invasion points by one and delete this clone okay so green flag let's see if that works Green flag, perfect, let's see if that works. Okay, see the apples are disappearing when I shoot them. Fabulous, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna pause there. So students, now you can go uh, make some points for your game using the variables button. I called my points alien invasion because that's the name of the game. And when the green flag is clicked, set the alien invasion points to zero. And then for all of the apple clones, when you start as a clone, forever check to see if you're touching the wand because that's what we call that's what this is called if you are touching the wand change alien invasion points by one and then delete the clone so teachers if you want to pause here and when the kids are all cut up i'll be here waiting all right welcome back i know i know the apple is just not very alien like so instead of um using one of the existing sprites i went to the internet while you were working and I tried to find some better sprites. So what I typed in was 8-bit uh, alien. So I downloaded this 8-bit alien that looks kind of cool. So look what I'm gonna do. I'm on the Apple right now. I'm gonna go to the costumes. See, here's the Apple costume right now. I'm gonna uh, import or bring that 8-bit alien picture and use that as a costume instead of this Apple. So look, I just go down here and see this upload right there? I'm gonna upload a costume or upload a sprite. So while you're working, I got this 8-bit alien sprite. So let me see right there, 8-bit alien, perfect. Let's see how this looks, ready, green flag? Okay, first of all, I know it's too big, but I don't like the, it's a square. You can see the white surrounding it. It's a big white square, I don't like that. It doesn't look very good. So you know what? Goodbye to the 8-bit alien. I'm going to trash can that one. I also got something that's called transparent 8-bit alien. You notice on this apple, it's got the black and white check. That means you don't see that part when you upload the sprite. All you see is the apple. You don't see this checked thing. It's transparent. So I got a transparent 8-bit alien on the internet while you're working. I'm gonna upload it now. So I'm gonna hit upload costume. And it was this one, 8-bit transparent alien right there. Let's see how that looks. Ready, green flag and go. 
Perfect. You see that? It's just the outline of the spaceship. I know it's not facing the right way. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to click this little arrow button right there. And then I'm going to flip it vertically so it's upside down. And I'm also going to shrink it because right now it's awfully big, 50%. I'm going to make it 10%. Perfect. So green flag ready. Look at that. Wonderful. So I went to the internet. I looked up transparent 8-bit alien or something like that. The key word is transparent. So then you have to download your um, uh, um, new, new graphic, your new picture. And then go to the Apple costumes right here. And then upload your new sprite. So I uploaded my transparent alien. I also turned it around. I flipped it vertically. And I shrunk it a lot too. So students, now you're going to go on the internet a bit. Find something better than an apple. And then upload it here and um, turn it the right way and shrink it to the right size. And teachers, when you're ready to go to the next part, I'll be waiting here so you can pause it now and I'll see you in a bit. All right, welcome back. So far, so good. I'm just going to go to the code. I'm going to test my game. Green flag and go. Okay, nice. Working pretty well so far. Shooting the aliens, they disappear. Ow! But you know what? This game could go on forever. It'll never end. We have to have an ending point to this game. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it so that the rocket has three lives. And once you, lose, once you get hit three times by one of these aliens, game over. So I'm going to go to the rocket ship now. And I'm going to create some points for the rocket ship. So I'm going to go to the variables button again. I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call this one um, lives. Perfect. Good, right there. So when the green flag is clicked, I want to set the lives to three points, right? Because every time you get hit, you lose a point and game over when you get down to zero. So set, um, uh, not alien invasion, set lives, that's lives, to three points. And I'm just going to move the lives over here just so it's not confusing right there. Perfect. So let's just double check that. Okay, alien invasion points go to zero. My... Uh, lives for my rocket go to three. Perfect. So now, whenever I'm touching one of these, um, see that's still called an apple? It's still called apple. If I'm touching apple, I lose a life. So I'm going to get another green flag. You can have lots of green flags. When the green flag is sick, clicked, forever, check to see if touching apple. Forever, if. If touching apple, so touching is a sense, touching right there, apple, touching apple, perfect. So when the green flag is clicked, I set my variable lives to three. And again, green flag forever check to see if touching apple. And if it is touching the apple, change lives, change lives by negative one. So I should be losing a point every time I get hit. Now, uh, let's just test this out. Okay, I'm going to run into it. Good, I lost a life. Good, I lost lives. Perfect. Every time I get hit, I lose a life. Look at that. Wonderful. Okay, great. But it still doesn't end. So we got to give it an ending point. So if the lie is equal zero, then stop everything. So I'm going to get another green flag. Green flag is clicked. If lives equals zero, so forever check, forever check to see if lives equals zero. If lives equals zero, equals zero. So that's under the operators. Equals right there. I'm going to drag it in right there. Equals zero. And i got to get the word lives in there. So lives is under the variables. So I'm going to grab the word lives. So forever check to see if lives equals zero. If they do, stop everything and I think it's under the control stop all right there perfect let's just test this out green flag go okay I got hit I lost a life good everything stopped perfect so now I'm going to make this a bit smaller for you to see now your job is to set lives for the rocket ship and I would set the lives to three 
and forever check to see if touching one of these apples. Okay, and if it is touching the apple, change lives by negative one. And then have the green flag forever checking to see if lives equal zero. And if lives do equal zero, stop everything. Hey, we're almost done. A couple more little enhancements. Um, so teachers, if you want to pause here and when your students are ready and all caught up, I'll be here waiting for the last part. All right, welcome back. Uh, this is the last little thing. I think you're going to like these enhancements to your game. Hey, look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go to the backdrops for a minute right there because we have this nice nebula backdrop. I'm going to add a couple of different backdrops. Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to backdrops here and you notice we have nebula right there. Well, I'm going to go get another nebula backdrop, the exact same one. You'll see why in a minute. Nebula. Good. I'm going to go get another nebula one. So I got three of them all together, the exact same ones. So there's nebula, nebula two, and nebula three. So I'm going to go to nebula, just the first one, okay? And look what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the T for text. I'm going to get a nice bright color, maybe a nice bright red like that. Perfect. I'm going to click T for text and choose a font that I like. And for me, it's the pixel. And I'm going to write on here, um, prepare to defend the planet Earth. Perfect. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. Wonderful. Right like that. Excellent. Okay, so good. I'm going to um, now go to Nebula 2 and just leave it the way it is. So Nebula 1 is the intro. It says prepare to defend the planet Earth. Nebula 2 is just plain. And Nebula 3, I'm going to again grab the text and look what I'm going to write this time. Game over. Like that. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. Perfect. I'm going to do it again. Another T for text. And I'm going to write this one. Um, better luck next time. Or something like that. You can choose what you want to write. I'm going to put it right there. Perfect. So now I've got three different backdrops. There's Nebula that says prepare to defend the planet Earth. I've got Nebula 2 with nothing on it. And Nebula 3 that says game over. So I'm going to go to code and I'm going to go to the rocket ship, okay? And it's going to move this over and I'm going to get another green flag. So when the green flag is clicked, I want it to go to the backdrop nebula. So uh, it's under the looks. Switch to backdrop nebula at the beginning of the game, right there. Then I'm going to have the computer wait for two seconds. Okay, that's all people need to read that, two seconds. And then switch to the plain nebula backdrop. That was nebula two. Okay, nebula two. So ready, let's all see if that works. Green flag. See, prepare, prepare to defend the planet Earth, and now I've got the plain one. Nice. Okay, wonderful. So I'm going to stop there. Now, if the lives equals zero, then I want to switch to nebula three. So look what I'm going to do. Green flag forever. If lives equal zero, then switch to backdrop nebula three and then stop all. Let's just test that. Green flag. Okay, prepare to defend the planet Earth. Okay, I'm just going to lose on purpose. Look at that. Lives got to zero and it says game over. Better luck next time. Perfect. Final thing. We need music. Video games always have music, so let me get some piece of music. I'm going to go to the sounds button. I'm going to go choose a sound. I'm going to go to the loops button. And the one I want under loops is video game. And that's a perfect one. I'm going to double click video game. Wonderful. Go back to code. When the green flag is clicked, um, I'll get another green flag. When the green flag is clicked, sounds... Play sound video game 2 until done, and then do this forever. Control forever. Wonderful. There we go. Green flag. <laughs> Last thing. If the lives equal zero, so if my rocket ship lives go down all the way to zero, we switch to backdrop nebula 3 that said game over, and we're going to stop the music too. Sounds. Um, stop all sounds and then just stop everything. So let's just test this out, ready? Green flag and...
perfect. Look at that. My points got down to zero. We switched to the backdrop Nebula 3 that I wrote game over on and the music all stopped. Well, I hope you enjoyed that game and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you for the next uh, activity. So uh, have a good rest of your day.